there are both challenges and opportunities uh, in Germany, particularly how to manage it for us, how to avoid uh, possible negative uh, consequences like uh, rising prices. But there we need to cooperate. The opportunity, of course, is in, in really developing renewable energies. In Germany, it's particularly uh, wind power. In Finland, it is uh, biomass. Uh, that is, uh, waste wood and so on, that can be used for biofuels. And there we, of course, would like to uh, have some understanding for our particular circumstances uh, as far as this biomass uh, is, is concerned and, and not to be uh, uh, forced to follow some bureaucratic European uh, systems that, that would discriminate. Our, against our opportunities. Certainly the European Union will be a forerunner and that is very much due to what the Nordic countries have done so far and, uh, and uh, now the German Energiewende. That really means that we are going to invest in sustainable development, particularly renewable energies, develop the technologies, of course, it, it's a real challenge uh, how to manage it, uh, but uh, uh, by cooperation, and I, I was really impressed uh, by the offer of uh, Minister Altmaier that we can, we should cooperate with Germany and the Nordic countries uh, in forming a, a, nuclear, uh, a, a, a renewables club globally. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, an initiative that, in my opinion, deserves support. I think there is a Nordic way because I think most of the drivers that we face at the moment here in Germany are an invention uh, from Scandinavia. We talk about more green energy. The Nordic countries are very green. They have a lot of uh, renewables. We talk about uh, questions uh, how the future market design should look like. There we have a lot of good proof points how that could work in a new energy vendor time. I'm talking about the strategic reserve. I'm talking about renewable support schemes that have been well experienced in, uh, in the Nordic states. And I think we can learn a lot from them to make the energy vendor happen. I think at the moment you have so many activities around energy vendor you could spend every night uh, on a different panel but I think this one is a very valuable one because it's uh, focused on countries that have experienced uh, that have made experiences with a renewable with a greener uh, energy design and I think it's very valuable and uh, I think the uh, the presence of the minister, the presence of the audience, uh, the lively debates show that this is uh, really a good format and this will, uh, I think, initiate, uh, or this might initiate a new discussion on political level as well, how to reshape uh, uh, the European or the North European energy uh, design uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a political terms as well. My name is Paul Friesvold. I represent the Belluna Foundation, but I work in Brussels, in Belluna, Europa, because we believe that Europe plays a very essential part in the policy debate. I am very honored to be invited for the International Advanced Sustainability uh, Policy Center, which I think the name is. But I'm actually quite serious, because Germany needs to see this from an international perspective. One of the big challenges of Germany is that you're looking at only Germany, but Germany has its carbon footprint, but Germany is also a leading economic nation in the world. And Germany has to come to terms with its global position, with its global role. That is why it is fantastic that Germany is putting so much into solar, uh, so much more that they can do on energy efficiency. But I also believe that Germany has to take the responsibility to develop and demonstrate the technology uh, to allow us to uh, capture and store CO2.
CCS is a technology that will be vital for German industry to thrive and to be competitive in a low-carbon economic uh, era. But more importantly, Germany has contributed so vastly to the climate change position that we're in, so that the poorer countries can no longer use the cheap, abundant and available energy to them, which is coal and fossil fuels. So if Germany has a, a moral responsibility, which I believe Germany has for many, many reasons, it should live up to its responsibility to take part in developing this technology, which will be so vital for the poorer countries to grow out of poverty in a clean but abundant energy way. I believe the energy wende war mit Blick auf die Integration in Europa zu kurz gesprungen. Es musste schnell entschieden werden, das war alles in Ordnung. Nun ist es höchste Zeit, dass wir uns darum kümmern, dass auch unsere Nachbarn in Europa und weit darüber hinaus uns sagen können, was sie davon halten und wir ihnen erklären können, wie wir unsere Umsetzung planen. Insofern ist eine solche Veranstaltung außerordentlich bedeutsam, außerordentlich wichtig. Und das soll ja nicht eine einzelne Veranstaltung sein, wir wollen das mit anderen ebenfalls weitermachen. Es war schon eine vergleichbare, kleinere Veranstaltung mit den Niederlanden. Und ganz sicherlich werden wir es mit anderen Nachbarn ebenfalls tun. Das ist extrem wichtig. Und natürlich haben die nordischen Länder ihre Besonderheiten, ihre Besonderheiten, die sie wiederum optimal nutzen für ihre Energieversorgung. Und so gibt es gute Anlässe zu diskutieren und sie auszutauschen. Das Wichtigste für mich war, dass alle gesagt haben, und es wird klappen. Es wird Schwierigkeiten machen, aber auch die Skandinavier und auch alle anderen aus Deutschland, die hier waren, die waren fest davon überzeugt, die Schwierigkeiten werden überwunden. Die Ingenieure, die sich daran begeben, werden die technischen Lösungen voranbringen. Die Politiker, die das zu bewältigen haben, werden auch dafür die Akzeptanz in der Bevölkerung haben. Und wir werden dazu kommen können, dass wir dadurch eine Investition in eine gute Wirtschaftszukunft Deutschlands legen. Denn das sind die Arbeitsplätze der Zukunft. Wir gehen in eine Welt mit 9 Milliarden Menschen hinein. Da brauchen wir neue Energietechniken. Das kann man nicht mit den jetzt bestehenden alleine machen. Und wenn wir dort vorankommen, ist das wirklich eine ganz großartige Leistung für die Zukunft, die wir jetzt allerdings auch durchaus mit bezahlen, was, das muss man sehen, die sozialen Probleme hervorruft, die wir auch zu lösen haben. Uh, it's exactly what I, th I think the word transition is aiming at, is that we have, we have an established system in place, which is basically uh, based on uh, fossil fuels, uh, which is large-scale production, and which has a, uh, an established set of players um, that, uh, that determine the terms, basically. And I think when you talk about an Energiewende, for me it means a number of things. It means that you will, uh, you will have a different set of players, where you would have a perspective that is much more based on, on the, the, the final consumer, um, where you have a system which is also much more integrating the smaller scale plus the larger scale, so you get an integration of small scale ability to produce, to use and distribute, and it's also based on a different set of uh, resources, renewable resources. That's for me the Energiewende. Oh, that's a... Uh, um, the main challenge, I, I don't, I wouldn't know. I think you, you need all three elements in order for this to work. Um, it's not, it's not all up to one part of this. If, if one part is missing or failing or not keeping pace, it will, it will not, it, the whole issue will fall. And it's, that's the challenge. The challenge is to match these through, three elements, these three dimensions, and, and ha maintain the same similar pace through all three of them. Because, as I said, if you lag behind on one of these three, you will fall with the total issue. So you need the policies in place, the framework in place, uh, you need your economics in it, it needs to be cost effective, it needs to be uh, uh, stimulating the right types of technology, but it also has to be a participatory approach from all the players in society, because without them we won't be able to do and get this uh, to work in the end. So um, challenges, balancing these three and keeping all three together in the same pace towards that, that energy when the final, pur final purpose of uh, a sustainable energy system. That's what I would think. It's a quite a short period of time actually. It's um, what we, we see it's pretty easy to predict at the moment. You will, you will in Sweden still have nuclear 
uh, because the, the lifetime cycle, sort of the lifetime of the nuclear plants that are existing are somewhere until 2030, 2035, need some investments, but that's what we're, where we're aiming at. Um, you will have, an, uh, um, uh, similar with hydro, we will have an influx of, uh, of renewables, um, 30 terawatt hours more than what we had in 2003. Uh, so you would have a lot more wind, a lot more biomass, I would think. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty similar. We will hopefully have uh, better effectiveness and efficiency. But again, the, the major challenge is in the transport sector, where is a lot of fossil fuels. And there, I think we will, uh, there we would have to see some difference. Because if you want to have a zero-based um, zero fossil fuel uh, transport sector in 2030, as the Swedish government has said, then you would have to make some progress in 2022. And that's, I think, where we would hopefully see a lot of the, the change. I, I think it is about a major change in the way we use energy and in the way we produce energy. And I think it is a, a very important step forward in a sustainable energy future. Well, I think first it's important to recognize that you, you can't separate this. So, so you need to look on technology, economy, policy and the civic society as a whole. But I think what is important if you think on the energy vendor is, is really that you, you engage the people. And I think it's in particular with energy efficiency, which is one of the kind of key components in a sustainable future. We know that engaging a, 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 an ordinary layman is extremely important. So I look very much forward on, on looking on the civic society sessions tomorrow. Well, I, I think Finland's future is Germany's past, in, in the sense that Finland uh, invests very heavily now in nuclear energy. So nuclear power is, is the main, main electricity source in the future. So let's say in, in 20, 30 years, more than 50% of the Finnish electricity will stem from nuclear power. So, so we, we may say that in 10 years, our ways in some way depart. Definitely there's, there's commonalities between Finnish and German energy policy, but I think in case of nuclear, there's a major kind of a change here.